It's 12 o'clock at night. You hear something banging on your door like a maniac, like they're trying to knock the door down. You go for your weapon. Your wife is in the bed. You tell her to stay in the bed. You go down. Door flies open. You open fire because you see three attackers that are barging into your door, thick neck goons that you have no idea what they are coming into your house for. You hit one in the leg. The thick neck goons unload 20 rounds. Every last one of them miss you. Six of them hit your wife or your girlfriend. They drag you to jail in that process. Now, what went wrong here? Those thick neck goons were cops doing a no-knock warrant. Cops who are doing a no-knock warrant basically don't have to give you any time of appraisal before they barge in. The catch here is that's against the law. That's the rub. And beyond whether it's against the law or not, if you're discharging 20 rounds, those rounds can go anywhere meaning they're not isolated to being just within the context of that room. Those bullets can go in the neighbor's yard. They can go in the neighbor's house. They can hit a baby. They can hit somebody else. What would have happened if those bullets hit a baby in another room? Breonna Taylor wasn't doing anything to anybody. She was innocent. You murdered her because you just unloaded with maximum justice all at once. Yes, yeah, somebody shot at you. But they shot at you because you burst in their house like a fucking maniac. They had every right in the world to shoot at you. They should have put a bullet in each and every one of your heads. And he would have been content and clean in doing so. You barged into his house. He had a legal firearm. He used that legal firearm for the exact reason that Republicans tell us to use legal firearms. To shoot attackers in the face. In this case... His aim was off. He shot him in the leg. Maybe if his aim was better, she'd be alive today. But nevertheless, she's dead. Her body riddled with bullets. Innocent. Now, the catch here is that it is illegal to do what those cops did. I'm going to just read it. This is the Washington Post. And you can read it along with me if you want. Right? Here. In 1995 case Wilson versus Arkansas, the court recognized for the first time the quote unquote castle doctrine and the knock and announce rule are embedded in the Fourth Amendment. The castle doctrine, which dates back centuries to English common law, states that the home should be a place of peace and sanctuary. Accordingly, except for the most extreme circumstances, the police must knock announce themselves and give time for the occupants in the home to answer the door peacefully to avoid a potential violent and destructive destruction of forced entry. Now, this article, just so we're very clear, in case somebody wants to say, well, the, you know, June 3rd, 2020, up to date, right here. Much of this has been previously known but this has yet to been reported. The no-knock warrant for Breonna Taylor home was illegal. Let's keep going. The Wilson ruling did allow for some exceptions. Though, most notably, if the police can show that the knocking and, and, and announcing would allow the participant suspect to dispose of evidence, flee, or assault the officers serving the warrant, the police can enter without knocking. After Wilson, many police departments explain the exigent circumstances exception by simply declaring the search warrant affidavits that all drug dealers had a threat to dispose of evidence, flee or assault the officers at the door. So in 1997, the Supreme Court unanimously ruled in Richards v. Wisconsin that this sort of blanket exception to the rule is unconstitutional. Well, basically it's logic, right? If we're gonna put in an exception that says you can burst open into the door if they're drugs. And then the cops just say, okay, everybody has drugs, right? There's potential, there might be pot in that room that these guys are trying to get rid of. In which case, it basically nullifies the very point 
of the exception. If you are continuously using it, by definition, it is not an exception. So the judge nuked it. You can't do that anymore. Meaning, the cops that have been doing this, they've just been flagrantly blowing over the law because they knew nobody was going to give a shit about what they did under normal circumstances. Again, 99% of all of the cops that murder or shoot people get off. Of the ones that do get prosecuted, only 33% go to jail. I'm sorry, only 33% get convicted. Of the 33% that get convicted, 36% go to jail or serve time. That means even if you get caught, 70% walk. And even if you get convicted, 70% do something else. That's obscene, that's obscene. There's no accountability in that process, which is why they would feel perfectly justified in doing an illegal no-knock warrant. Murdered that woman. One of the officers that involved in it has been fired. Now, the district attorney came out yesterday and gave this plea to give them time. Now, while given that plea, boarded up the courthouse because he understood that people might have been dissatisfied with him not pressing charges right then and there and declaring, yes, we're pressing charges against the three officers that murdered a woman that was laying there in her PJs. By the way, the cop tried to make the argument that the post office said that there were drugs. The post office said they had no idea what the fuck he was talking about. He's lying on top of it. Potentially, unless the post office is lying. Well, somebody is lying. And I don't trust that cop. Especially if you got murder on your conscience. One of the officers has been fired. The officer that fired Pernick 10 rounds, 10 rounds by himself, astonishing. Maximum justice, maximum justice, literal terms. A police officer involved in the shooting death of Breonna Taylor, uh, killing the murder of Breonna Taylor, will be fired, the Louisville, Kentucky mayor announced on Friday. Louisville Metro Police Officer Brett Hackinson was one of the three officers involved in a shooting that took place on March 13th when they conducted a no-knock warrant. To make this more perverse, they had already had the people who were involved in the crime. This was fucking extra credit, and it wasn't extra credit at all because there was nothing in the house. They were perfectly innocent. Louisville Metro Police Officer Brett Hackins right for that part. Mayor Greg Fisher said LMPD Chief Rob Schroeder is initiating termination procedures but cannot offer more details. Unfortunately, due to the provision in state law that I am very much would like to see changed, both Chief and I were precluded from take talking about what brought this moment or even the timing of this decision. So we, we can't tell you shit. Fart in a jar. That's the best we can do. According to the termination letter that was shared with local reporters, Hackinson violated procedure when he fired 10 rounds into Taylor's apartment while executing the warrant. I don't even like them saying the warrant because it makes it look like there was some kind of criminal enterprise where they were perfectly innocent. It's the framing of it that I don't particularly like. These guys went in like cowboys and end up murdering somebody. Call it what it is. The wild part about this is this one man fired 10 shots. You know, the Rashad Brooks one, what did I say about that particular shooting? I said, you are shooting at somebody who, bat who has a taser. And even though I know he's pointing something at going through somebody else's wall, hitting somebody else's coat, going outside, like, there needs to be some level of rational judgment when you are dispensing force like this. And I understand 
you get this kind of narrow focus in the moment when your adrenaline is going and your body is isolating a particular target. It's a human thing, right? I get it. But you shouldn't have been doing this shit in the first place. Everything that took place from that point on when you breached that door was your fault. And each and every one of you should be held accountable for it. You murdered somebody. You need to put that in perspective. There is no way that you can balance that scale. That woman had a life. That woman had a boyfriend. That woman had an entire life ahead of her. She was in her 20s. Extinguished. Because you're playing fucking cowboys. And this is just one of what? Other murders that took place where people were in their fucking homes. When that guy called and he made the point that we're not even safe in our homes. And he was being honest about that. Like that wasn't hyperbolic at all. Because you can point to multiple cases where people got shot in their homes. What was the guy who was in his home and the cop barged in? The weird case where the woman thought she was in the wrong place and ends up murdering the guy in his own house. Or the other case where they shoot through the window and end up killing the person. And the, like, you know, when people make this argument about Black Lives Matter, that argument is the same argument of, I know what it is. When Obama had came out and he had to basically cowed, humiliated, show his birth certificate. The humiliation, he may have felt it, but basically the humiliation was thrust upon him by a stupid enough audience that would want to see him do that. The first African-American president and he had to prove to the nation that he was actually an American. How undignified is that? And not just for him, but also for the nation that even gets up enough momentum for that to take place. One case is brutally racist. Other people just wanted something to throw at him. But either way, he should have never had to do it. Obama said, I watched this with a certain degree of curiosity. And... I, you know, he finally comes out and says, okay, here's my birth certificate. Undignified. Leaving all gravitas behind in order to do that. Black Lives Matter is that. Meaning, at a certain point, you have people who have to say, our lives matter. Now, you would think that's the most natural thing in the world. Of course, these lives matter. But it's not experientially true when you look around, especially with the way that cops can extinguish a life. And not just cops, by the way. Random fucking people who would chase down a person and murder them in the street. With the person who was with them, the woman that was with them, taking a picture of the bleeding corpse to put on Snapchat. Put yourself in their headspace for a moment. If you were riding with someone and they just murdered someone, is the first thing you're thinking of, I want to put that on Snapchat? What kind of callous fucking person thinks of that? Or what kind of viciously racist person thinks of some stupid shit like that? And yet, that is literally what took place. So when people make this case, saying, yeah, they're not safe in this place or that place, I don't necessarily have this hyperbolic thing of, um, overarching fear of my safety. And I know sometimes media putting this stuff out overemphasizes it and can freak people out in ways that they probably shouldn't necessarily be freaked out because under normal circumstances, nothing has materially changed. Uh, cops kill a thousand people a year. The only th thing that's different is you're paying attention to it. It's like you seeing, um, you know, you're riding a, a blue car and then you start seeing blue cars. You, well, you're paying attention to it now. And you're like, holy shit. That cop murdered that guy. Maybe those cops were racist. Maybe those black folks were right. Maybe racism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just saying the fact that the people had to say our lives matter is an undignified position to have to take. But that's thrust on you by a fucking society that basically comes away with a different conclusion. So, yeah, they have to make that claim. Black Lives Matter. They have to state that. They have to be proud of that. They have to hold that up. Just like the people in the civil rights movement had to say, I am a man. Why? Because for so long, they would call you boy. They would minimize you and so forth. Well, in this situation, this 
is brought upon by a deficit of what people would consider value. And in having that deficit in value, it needs to be made very clear and asserted as such. And unfortunately, the society didn't understand this because otherwise this would not need to be said. It's unnecessary, it's unfortunate. My heart really goes out to this woman, I mean, to the family of her. Basically, the cop is fired, he's been terminated. I have determined that you violated standard operating procedure when you actions displayed an extreme indifference to the value of human life when you wantonly and blindly fired 10 rounds into the apartment of Breonna Taylor, the letter stated. Um, like I said, it's very possible that the very act that the boyfriend shot at him in that moment, the officer feared for his life, in which case he unloads. Now, the fact that he fired the other officer makes somewhat of a, somewhat of a case that that person acted inappropriately, which means he may be susceptible to a lawsuit just by definition of being fired for acting inappropriately. But beyond that point, that's I don't know how that's going to work out. He shoots. Does the cop have a right to shoot back even if he's in a situation where he calls the situation and they're breaking the law? It's very possible the answer is yes. The cop said, I fear for my life, the guy shot at me. In which case, the prosecution is trying to say, okay, how do we get around this notion that the cops fear for their lives? Or what can we get them on where the fear for their life thing doesn't necessarily apply? Because I think that's kind of the quirk, and that's probably why this is taking so long. The other cases, if you notice, were pretty clear cut, cut and dry. Yes, we're charging them. We're going to th going through with it. But in those cases, it was like they shot the guy in the back or something to that effect. In this one, it's it's, it's different. The fact that they got shot at may in of itself change the dynamics of this case. So even though they were illegal and breaking in, and yes, they flagrantly murdered her, the fact that they were shot at might have been justification for them to shoot back. Now, the catch becomes how many times these have to shoot back. But I don't necessarily think they're going to count that because basically these guys are running off adrenaline at that point. There's, there's like tunnel vision and just going. Fucking extinguish the life. Lock his ass up. Schroeder also added that Hankinson violated procedure by using deadly force without knowing the force was directed at a person who posed no immediate threat or who posed an immediate threat, meaning somebody shoots you or at you. You unload, but who are you unloading on? Do you even see the person that shot you? Like, because they, they didn't hit the guy. Like, think about it for the moment. The guy comes out and says, bang, and they barrage. All of the bullets miss him. Six hit her. The other 14 elsewhere. Is that a successful raid? I mean, for fuck's sake, all of those bullets that went elsewhere could have killed somebody else. I'm not going to go back into it. I mean, it's just, that's this flagrantly bad behavior that we allow. And you realize that under normal circumstances, we wouldn't have even known this. Like this, nobody would have even cared about this. Look, this is not a black issue. Yes, we're killed disproportionately and we're over-policed. But a thousand cops, I mean, a thousand murders a year or killings a year, we only make up, for, what, 13% of this population. A lot of them are you, also. The cop thing is an issue, and it's not just an issue for us. During the incident, Taylor's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, heard plainclothed police attempting to break down the door. Walker took out his licensed gun and fired it, according to the investigation. Police opened fire and hit Taylor, 25, and EMT, at at least eight times while she was asleep in her bed. Wow. 
No disciplinary action is taking place against the other two officers. Look, I understand why they were boarding up that building. Because if they came out with anything other than, yes, we're going to press charges, even if you can't sustain those charges, you better tell them that you're pressing something. Because i got to be honest, this is infuriating to read. And they are just waiting to burn shit down, which is what you know. Which is why you are taking all of that time to try everything in your toolkit to figure out what you can charge those officers with. Do your job. Arrest them. Like. Share. Subscribe.